Hi, everyone. We're going to give everyone a couple of minutes to log on. Welcome to our workshop hosted by Rocio Flores from Bella Entrepreneurs and Google, our host and our presenter, Robert Martinez. Um, we, want, we want to thank our team for helping us, for supporting us, for teaching us and inspiring us and helping us grow. Um, <coughs> I want to remind you about our Goddess Mercado, April 9th, and our Queer Mercado the following Saturday. This, the Goddess Mercado will be a Conejita theme, and it's our one-year anniversary or our birthday. We'll be having a birthday cake, and three uh, awesome la local Latinas will be putting on a fabulous fashion show. So please come out and support us and help us grow. I'm going to hand it off to Rocio. She's going to have a couple of other things that she's going to share with you before she hands it over to Robert. Thanks again, guys, for coming and joining us and uplifting us. Go ahead, Rocio. Hola. Hello, everybody. Buenas tardes. It's so great to be here with you all. Always. You, this group inspires me, all of you that we've had an opportunity to meet, and everybody that's new, welcome. A um, couple of reminders, just make sure you keep your mic on mute. Sometimes we get back feed, so just um, take note of that. Uh, but we're looking forward to a really great session with Robert. I am Rocio Flores, as Diana mentioned, and I am the founder of BEIA, which stands for Brillantes Emprendedoras Latinas de Los Angeles. And the acronym happens to spell out BEIA, which I think is beautiful because all Latina emprendedoras are beautiful. So um, I'm happy to be here with you. I hear some backbeat actually already, <laughs> right? Can you all make sure you're muted? Or Diana too, Diana too, Robert can help out with that. Um, so I, uh, our uh, organization is actually, uh, has three pillars that we focus on just really quickly wanna share before we start. And that's highlighting the voice of the Latina entrepreneur through interviews, um, highlights in our Latina biz directory. We also do collective learning. So we have workshops like these, empowerment gatherings, um, events and resources that we share with folks on grants and, and different um, information related to small business. And the third is our grant making service. So we are going to start our campaign to fundraise and we're hoping to be able to support five emprendedoras this year with $2,500 grants. Um, and so we start that process. We, we feel that and we know that we need to also fuel our minds, but also inject capital into our business to be successful. And so I'm looking forward to continuing to work with all of you. And I thank Diana for her beautiful spirit and for always partnering with us. And Robert, of course, for all his knowledge and his energy that he brings forth. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna pass it over to Robert. No se oye. Ahora sí, ahora sí se oye. El público lo oiga, la gente, nuestro pueblo. How's everyone doing? Roberto Martinez, pleasure to be here with you guys today. Love, love, love you guys joining us this evening. Always great seeing some smiling faces. Lisa, thank you so much for keeping your camera on. I know we're a long day. Woo! <laughs> Happy face. Uh, really excited here today to be here and to be able to work with you guys. Talk about how to... Hola, Natasha. Gracias por agregándote. Diana, can you give me access to the present uh, functionality and get a chance? So I want to briefly introduce myself before we get started. Roberto Martinez here, based out of Los Angeles, the city of Long Beach. And what we're going to talk about today is all around how to make your website work for you, uh, which is ex extremely exciting stuff. If you guys can, I please ask you to tell me a little bit about you, where you're visiting us from, what part of the city, if you're in East LA, downtown LA, West LA, South Central, whatever part of the city, love to know where you're from. Second thing, Orange County, there we go. Some folks from the OC. Get people in there, Rosie, what kind of company do you have? What kind of business do you have? Really important so that I could better improve the process and humanize El Sereno, that's <laughs> right, Alejandra. Uh, humanize this conversation, make it more engaging by bringing your business to light and showing you how your business and what you sell and what you provide 
can apply what I'm going to discuss today. Super important here. So just waiting for Diana to provide me the access so I could share my screen and then we'll get started. So I'll try that. You. Try that now, Robert. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I still can ask that. So I'll I'll start while we have that fixed. I'll start to discuss a little bit who I am. Uh, Roberto Martinez, small business owner like you all. I launched my business back in 2016, really focused on helping our community, nuestra comunidad, to improve their digital and operational capabilities so they could grow. And that's what it's all about. How do we grow our business? How do we make sure that our business is able to grow and scale? So I've been doing this for five years now for Google for four years. They brought me on in 2017 and around the country, perfect, around the country being able to go and present for our community across the United States, really helping us understand how to use digital marketing tools, digital marketing services, so that you can increase the one thing that you care most about, which is helping your community by hiring locally, the only way you know how, by selling the product or service. Gabby, thank you so much. Career coaching, first generation Latinos from OC. Thank you, Gabby. Definitely let me know what company you're from and what you actually sell or provide. We always try to network with everyone here. So again, Roberto Martinez, if you want to follow me on social media, there's my social media handles, my email, robertomar at robotgoogle.com. If you have any questions regarding what we're going to be discussing today, any questions about Google, any questions about Google products or services, even discounts, whatever you want, shoot me an email when it comes to Google. If you want to sign up for future websites and workshops, please do. Super easy to do. Latinos achieve. I love it. By messaging me. Okay. So you didn't hear me babble about who I am. We we're going to talk about your customers and how your customers find you. And so what we realized in the past couple of years, especially post-pandemic, is that small business needs to be online. And why? Well, because things like the pandemic happened. And what happened during the pandemic? We could not engage with our small business customer because they weren't allowed to come into our store. So what would we have to do? We have to sell online. And we saw a huge increase based on that need to sell online. About 80% of prospective customers start their journey online, which means that you as a small business owner have to, have to, have to get online. And so hopefully all of us have our business online on the website. I wanted to do a quick survey based on buttons. Please press one if you have a website, press two if you do not have a website so we can have a better sense of how to tailor this conversation. One if you have a website, two if you don't have a website. Because if you don't have a website, Google has a tool that's completely free for you to use. It's called Google Business Profile, and you can create your own website. But it seems like the majority of us do have a website, and we can leverage the heck out of it to grow our company. Okay. So we get this. I, I, I have a long-running joke that Rosil's probably tired of me saying, what's the first thing we did when we woke up today? We see our friend here. She woke up today. What did she do? Did she reach over to our loved one and hug them and kiss them and say, we love you so much. You make my life complete. <laughs> or do we go for this phone and start to see IG, uh, you know, TikTok, who messaged us, who text us? The vast majority of us reach for that phone, right? We reach for that phone and see who the heck is with us, who the heck messaged me last night, what's going on in my life. And that's exactly what happens to your customer. Your customer, 80% of the time, starts their journey on a mobile device and gets on this because they have a problem they want to fix. Now, you guys are all small business owners and you guys want to sell to that small business client. And how do you go about doing this? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can use for your website to connect with your customers. You can set up appointments. You can sell online. You can create contact free payments. I have a client that she sells her purses online and she has a bunch of inventory online and she just sold one of her bags last week and it was quick. I think it took her from the moment the customer landed on her website to they bought, it took that customer a minute and a half to buy that. 
So there's a lot of different ways you can connect with your prospective customer by using your website. You could control the deal flow within your website. You could fundraise, gift certificates. It's a cool one. I just I had a, a, a really cool lady that does styles. I'm not really stylish. And uh, we pay for her to come in and provide one of her giveaways to train people how to be a little bit more stylish. And how do we buy it? bought her gift certificate? We bought it online on her website. Something as easy as a gift certificate. I mean, she tells us she sells anywhere from five to 10 gift certificates a month. And she just puts it up on the website and sells it that way. Super easy to do. So we're going to talk about how you can use this. So right now, I want you to think about how you connect with your current customers and what are some different ways you can think through connecting with those customers. And typically, there's six ways to connect with customers, but they all require us to connect with them online. Now, there's online marketing and offline marketing. The vast majority of customers now are starting their journey online and they're using websites to get a sense of where you're at and what you're selling. They do this by Googling you. They literally go on your, um, the Google search engine and start typing in the products or the services they need. They see your product or your service and then they compare your product and service to other businesses, other clientele, other locally sourced restaurants, if you're a restaurant owner, or if you're selling a shirt or a product, let's say you're a banker or an accountant and you're providing accounting services, they're looking at that and they're saying, hmm, which one's better? Which one has more reviews? Which one has better reviews? Which one's closer to me? So they're taking all this into account. And so we have to think through how to create a plan to connect with our customers in a distinct and unique way. And so what's one way we can do this? to stand out. Well, we have to create a website and we have to create a design that speaks to our values with colors, with graphics, with functionality. Typically when you build a website, there's two things you wanna consider. One is called user experience, UX, and the second one is called user interface, UI. All that means is when you get into the website, what is the experience you have on the website? There's certain websites that's very easy to use. There's other websites that's really hard to use. Really hard to use websites have a poor, what's called user interface. So it's hard, it's clunky, it's not intuitive. There's not a lot of clear signs on the website to help you promote and direct traffic. Now, I want you guys to answer me a question real quick. How many clicks does it take to buy something on Amazon? There's no wrong answers. Crystal says one, but Linda says two. One. One, I love it, one, that's exactly right. One, Lisa says one, that's exactly right. How easy is it to buy on Amazon? One click. Have you guys ever tried buying on Best Buy's website or Target's website or Macy's website? It's a lot of information that they ask you before you can buy. Think about your own website. How many clicks does it take for them to submit a form? How many clicks does it take for them to go online and call you? We have a term in, in web development and that's clicks are currency. And what do I mean by that? You knowingly know it or not, you're paying for clicks. You want people to get to your store and you want people to click so that they buy from you, so that they call you, so that they fill out the information they need. And the more clicks they take, the less likely they are to buy from you. So you want to make that customer journey on your website as easy as possible. How do we do this? Through really great graphics and interactions, colors that are vibrant, that tell a story, and functionality that makes it as easy as possible to take the action that you want that customer to take. So what are six things that we can walk away with today and focus on on our website when we leave this session? Well, the first one is all about your goal. What do you want to do now? This might be easy. Can you write to me your top three goals on your website? Just tell me three goals for your business website right now that you wanted to do on the chat. I'll tell you for me, there's three specific goals that I want people to do when they land on my website. I want them to A, give me their information in whatever shape, way, or form they can. So I want them to give me their email, give me their phone number, or give me their email and phone number. Lisa says, I want them to convert. 
great, but how do you want them to convert? It's really important to think through that. So you have to develop your goals around that conversion. And some businesses think through this. Okay, well, maybe if I tell them 5% off, if you sign up for, if you're a new user and you sign up, that's how you convert. Belinda wants them to click and make sure they book a meeting with her. And so why would they book a meeting with you? Well, that's easy because you have a case study that talks about how working with you is going to help your life X ways or Y ways. I, I don't know what the business is, but let's say you're an accountant. Hey, working with me is going to save you on your tax return. We have a history of saving up to $250 on tax returns. Don't take my word for it. Here's a testimonial. So now you're giving them something in exchange for something. It's quid pro quo. Like you give me your pen, I'll give you a pen back. You give me you know, a, a case study, I'll give you my information. We have great traffic, increased sales, and enhanced experience. So how do we increase traffic? When you think about your lead funnel, that starts from the very beginning, through website, through email marketing, paid ads, social media, all that drives the traffic in there. Once we get them in, in the website, we have to create goals for our website. Then we have to organize how the customer is going to get to take that action which is extremely important. So what do I mean by that? So we have what's called above the fold and below the fold. When you go to a website, you usually see it here in this device. Remember 80% of customers, eight out of 10 people start their journey on their phone. So when they're looking at this, they're only looking at very little of the phone. And so when they're looking at the phone, you wanna get the message right away in the top half of your website. So that means, you have your phone number ready to go. You have what's called a CTA, a call to action that lets them know exactly what your goal is. I want you to call me. I want you to email me. I want you to buy from me. When you, so for example, when you go to Macy's and if we just take an example real quick and we just click out and go to the Macy's website. I promise I could spell, apparently not. Okay, so we land on Macy's and look immediately they have what are called call to action. They're, different. they're segmenting out the audiences. Are you a man or a woman? Because they want you, they don't know who you are. If you're a man, you go to your right. If you're a woman, you go to your left. And then they have, these are called calls to action. They're selling immediately. Here's the sell by now. Here's another sell by now. They got my Luma, Lisa, that's right. Here's another call to action at the very top of the website. This is called above the fold. So. Here they're telling you right away $25 when you free shipping. When you buy more than $25, we'll ship it to you. So that allows you as a customer that's looking to buy here exactly the information you need to take that action. So they know exactly what their goal is. They're not wasting any time. Now, how do we do that? Lisa said they have Maluma, right? Useful content. Maluma is an extension of that content. Content meaning the words, the images, the videos that you have. Why is that so important? Because it grabs your attention. Lisa's like, wow, Maluma's there. What are you doing to inform your customer once they land on the website? What images, what words, what phrases, what's your call to action? Is it strong? You have to think through this. And the only way you can think through this is by having our customer in mind and seeing what do they care about? Why would they buy from us? The other three goals that we have for a great website that we want to create is functionality. So let's say you, uh, you sell grass or you might be, I mean, who sells grass nowadays? Or you might be selling uh, units and knickknacks, right? So when you think about the knickknacks that you're selling, let's say you sell uh, phone covers, you want to make sure that you inform them and they could go into your website, select what they need, and then send it out. Intuitive. Is it structured in a really easy way? When you land on the website, is it easy for me to navigate around? Do I have to think about it or is it very intuitive to use? Uh, the, the best example, this is an old example. Uh, I don't know how many of us remember the pot, uh, iPod. I, I'm, I'm dating myself, but back in the day, that was the hottest thing around like 20 years ago. And so you get that iPod and you learn how to use your thumb. And before we had Nokia phones, and so we will push the numbers to call. But Apple, in all their wisdom, realized, well, we want the customer to not use it. 
index, we want them using their we want them using their thumb. So we have to train them. We have to make it so it's really easy to use your thumb. So what do we do? We launch the pot the iPod so you can start learning how to use your thumb. And now we'll launch a phone that's a touch screen. And now it doesn't seem weird. It seems intuitive. So they trained you to learn how to use it. This is what the strategy with an Apple, which is amazing when you think about the length of goal they had. This is like a five-year goal. We have a long-term strategy. We're going to launch different products and train our customer along that customer journey so they could learn how to use this. Okay. Think about your website the same way. How do I provide an intuitive experience that makes it as easy as possible to take the action that you guys want, which is tell a friend. So there's functionalities on websites that allows you to reshare the content, pass this along, share with your network. How do you make that journey to get to that call to action at the very top of the website or at the very top of the website? And then search friendliness. So this is really big. How many of us want free customers? Press one if you want a free customer. If you don't want a free customer, I can't help you. But all of us, Anna says like, yeah, I want a free customer. I'm happy to hear that, Anna. Yeah, Anna, yes, we all want free customers. So guess what? There's something called search engine optimization. Big fancy word. All that means is how do we structure our website in a way that Google picks it up and gives us free traffic to our website? Imagine, if you will, you're, you have a storefront and there's 10 people outside waiting to get in. And those 10 people, just by improving your images, just by improving the images inside your store, just by improving the copy, the words inside your store, just by in, in improving the aisles inside your store and making it look nice, those 10 people become 20. That is what SEO is all about. It's, getting to the point you organize your website in such an easy to manage and easy to communicate manner that Google is saying, wow, Elizabeth is fantastic with her website. She's providing great information. Let's keep sending customers to her website because she's informing them because all Google cares about is informing and organizing the world's information. The reason you use Google is because when you go on Google, you find exactly what you want. They are able to scan 20,000 websites in a second. That's a lot of websites. So if you organize your website in this fashion, guess what Google's going to say? This is a great website. It, it's well organized. It provides the answer to the question that people have when they use the Google search. Let's send or get what's called organic traffic to their website. Okay, so now, why do you want a website? This is not as intuitive as it seems, right? <laughs> it's not as easy as it seems. So there's a lot of reasons why we might want a website. We might want to build our brand. Uh, Rocio does a great job with Bella promoting who she is. She's a thought leader in the market space. She helps out her community. And she wants a website where people can find her and learn about all the great work she's doing to help out her local community. So she's building her brand. And in the near future, big corporations are going to reach out to her and say, hey, we love what you're about. We want you to speak at this conference. Here's $10,000. Come speak and share your story. And that's what her goal is for her brand. But what about you as a business owner? You want to generate leads right? <laughs> you want to generate leads. <laughs> so how do you do that? We talked about it. Cause to action, clear structure in your website, images and copy that speaks to the needs and desires of the customers. We want to make sales. We just don't want them to come in and fill out the information. We want them to buy and buy now. Do we do that very easily? I was just mentioning to uh, Diane and, and the folks beforehand that we have a client that has a hundred bags that they're trying to sell in abandoned carts. An abandoned cart is when you go to Macy's, you, oh, I love this shirt or this skirt or this sweater. You click on it, you put it in the cart and then you leave the website. She has over a hundred bags just sitting there and her bags on average are worth $400. Think about that. It's a lot of money she's living on the table because she's not thinking about how to develop a strong website. 
Okay, now re-engaging customers. What can she do? She could remarket to those customers. She could set up email marketing to remind the customer, hey, you forgot this bag. We'll give you 5% off or better yet, we'll give you free shipping. That we just doing that alone, I promise you, if she just is, was to send an email to a hundred of those customers that left the bag there and saying, hey, free shipping, she would convert at least three to four percent. Three to four percent of a of a hundred is three to four sales. Three to four sales of four hundred dollars is twelve hundred dollars that she's living on the table because she's not re-engaging with her customers. And that's what you potentially can do just by following these simple steps of re-engaging through email marketing, through grip campaigns, so that you can increase sales. Now, people don't realize this in, in the big resignation right now that's going on. We, we want to tell our story. We want to tell people why we want to work with them. I love working with Rocio. I love working with Goddess Mercado because you guys have a mission. And your mission is to help Latina entrepreneurs. I'm attracted to that mission. I will sign up. I will be here till eight o'clock at night because I believe in what you guys are doing. And so the same thing works for your business. You want to tell people your story so they could feel connected because it's a story. It's a human story. And people want to buy local. People want to buy and support their communities. The way they do that is by informing them. And the way they do that is by you educating them on why they should work with you. And then last but not least, provide customer support. Really, really big piece right here. I absolutely love this piece because you can have a little, little bot on the bottom right of your business website at no cost. It's completely free. You can even, and every single time someone leaves a message in your bot, it messages you. And you can respond in real time and it's completely free to use. All you have to do is integrate that bot. Okay, so how do we go about selling now? Well, I, I'm actually taking a class on smart goals. It sounds silly. Ah, oh, smart goals. Everyone knows the specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time sensitive. But what we don't realize when it comes to smart goals is that we're very, very busy. Everyone here is running their business and they might be working full time as well. And they might be parents, they might have kids. If we don't prioritize our time and what really drives the growth of our business, we're never going to grow the way our competitors are growing. And so what, what I realized in, in the class that I'm taking is that yes, smart goals are important to define and having them be specific, right? So we, I wanna sell five bags a month. That's very specific, that's measurable. Is it attainable? Yes, I sell about three bags right now. I can sell two more. Is it relevant? Yes, it helps me drive my growth in my business, but is it time sensitive? No, well then a month. Yes, it is actually, it is relevant and is specific, it is attainable, relevant, and time sensitive. So if that is my specific goal, how am I structuring my day to hit that goal? Because everyone is very busy in their day and they have a million and one things to do. But if you're telling me this is your one goal to sell five purses, then everything you do around that should be geared towards selling those five bags. And so maybe now you invest into the email marketing campaign because you know that you can get that additional sales just by using that email marketing campaign is an example of how you would use a smart goal to laser focus your marketing and your, your attention. And that's basically why this is such a powerful tool. I didn't believe on it in the beginning, but it makes a lot more sense now when you realize how busy you are as an as a entrepreneur, as a mom, as a dad, you know, as a, a family member. And so these goals really help you just focus in on what is going to move the needle. So just something to think about, what is your goal right now? Can you guys tell me, you guys mentioned it a little bit earlier. You guys all said, you know, we have different goals. Uh, we have leads, we want to in, increase customers. So once we had defined that goal, let's, let's create a, a smart goal around that. We had a lot of different, People mention a lot of different things. Uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit, <laughs> invite Maluma, <laughs> become friends with Maluma. Yes, that's definitely a goal. Uh, but increase sales. Okay, what do you mean by increase sales? Do you mean by how much? What percentage? How many sales a given day? How many sales a given month? How are we gonna increase sales? Tell a friend. How many friends are we talking about? One friend, five friends, 10 friends, a million friends, a thousand friends? 
Okay, well, let's think about that. How do I tell a friend? Well, email marketing is a great way to tell a friend. Okay, so then I need to create an email marketing campaign. Yes, well, how do I do that? Maybe I capture their emails on their website. How do I do with that? A push notification. Okay, I create a push notification on my website. Okay, well, I need to offer them something. Maybe I offer them free shipping, or maybe I offer them 5% off, or maybe refer a friend and get 5% off. Wow, now I'm really thinking, right? I'm thinking about all the different ways I could focus on that goal of telling a friend. Lisa, said, Lisa just threw a huge, 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 huge question. She says, how do you create value? So let's take that concept of creating value and it's very vague, like what, what is value? And let's use it here, which is who is your target audience? How do we create value is really defined by your customers. And what do I mean by this? We need to completely understand who your customer is. You guys walk into a store, you guys walk into a conference, you guys went to Goddess Mercado last weekend and you guys had a great time, right? You all had a great time. Are they your customers? It could be. Uh, who is your actual customer? So we have to get into their shoes and think about how they think, how they act and how they live and clearly defining how you can help them and how you can add value to their life. So now let's, let's, let's take that concept. How do you add value? So it's a, it's a vague notion, but I'm gonna simplify it very easily. And that if you, Belinda is using her example. She's a photojournalist building a portfolio website. And Belinda provides a solution to a problem. The problem is we want great images for our website or we want great images for our quinceanera or our wedding, or you name it. That's the problem. Belinda offers the solution. So how is Belinda providing value? The value falls in that she's solving the problem of that quinceanera. She's solving the problem of that wedding. She's solving that problem of that business owner who needs to improve the images of the website, right? So that's how she's solving those problems. Really, and that's how, they, how you as a business owner provide value. You think about your product or your service, and it provides a solution to a problem, a problem that your target customer is having, which is super important to think about. So we have to define our customers. Not everyone is our customer. We have to dig deep into the weeds of who exactly is our customer and how we make them emotionally buy from us. Everyone thinks that buying is logical. It is not logical. It is 90% emotional. We go to a nice house. This is a big ticket item and we fall in love with the house. Oh my goodness, I love this house. That's not a rational decision or I love this car. That's not a rational decision or I love these earrings. I don't know if you guys seen Rosso's earrings. I absolutely love them. I'm like, wow. I don't think she looked at those earrings and was rational about it. It was like, hmm, well, I could buy these earrings and they'll match with my jacket and my shirt. It was like, no, I love these earrings. They're beautiful. It made her feel something. So we want to really connect with the customer and understand their emotions, motivations, and desires. And if we can do that, we're able to set help. And that Gabby nailed it. Solving the problems of your customers is how you solve and provide value. Once we do that, we need to measure everything. You need to track sales online, collect information, monitor phone calls, measure engagement. All these little things are going to help you understand if you're doing a great job or not when it comes to your business. And so what, there's an old saying in, in data analytics. My boss used to say to me, so I got sick of hearing it, and it's what gets measured gets done. And what does that even mean? That means if you're measuring tracking online sales and you're measuring how many people are submitting it, by default, you're gonna start focusing on how do I improve on it? How do I get more submissions? What did I do before that helped me get more submissions? And then you're gonna start looking at the numbers, looking at your website differently, looking at the calls that are coming in differently. Was it a Monday? Was it a Tuesday? Was it a Wednesday? Was it a Thursday? Was it a Friday? Was it a Saturday? Was it a Sunday? What day? Is there a pattern here? And so I'll give an example about a picture parlor that um, ran a promotion and they looked at their data on their website and they realized they had a big bump on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Oh, wow, we're getting a lot of traffic on Wednesdays and Thursdays. 
And they realized that the persons who were ordering were moms and dads. And the time that they were ordering was around six or seven. So what do you think was going on with that picture parlor that was getting these calls on Wednesdays and Thursdays around six o'clock from people who were 40 years or above that were parents? So any idea what, what that picture parlor was doing? I'll give it away. What they realized is that these people were coming in and they were parents that were buying food for their kids. And so what did this picture parlor do? They ran a promotion. They ran a promotion saying family packages on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So that customers, when they saw that, were more likely to buy because they were anticipating the need of that, of that customer and providing value. So how do we do that with Google Analytics? So hopefully everyone here, please press one if you do have Google Analytics, Please press two if you do not have Google Analytics connected to your website. Also, while, while folks are doing that, if you can mute yourself, just I think we're getting a little bit of back feed. Thank you. All right. And Gabby asked, any recommendations on what tools to track? Google Analytics, it's a free tool. It doesn't cost you a dime. Most of us have Google Analytics. We just have to interpret the data now. Okay, and congrats to Lisa for doing an ID Live and getting a ton of people watching. And so what does this allow you to do? Google Analytics allows you to track, oops, I'll be doing that. Allows you to track what people use, what keywords and key phrases they type in the Google search engine, the demographics, the content that they're engaging, if they have abandoned cards, how they got to your website, which is really important. You, there's different work called channels. There's you know, social media is a channel. There's direct, which is they go directly to your website. There's organic, which is the search on Google search. There's affiliate, which is you listed your website on Goddess Mercado. Goddess Mercado saw your website listed there. People found it, clicked on it, and then went to your website. And if you understand where your sales are coming from, then it's a good idea to start promoting. Um, I'll give you an example of what happened to me. I used, I, I, looked at my data and I realized that a lot of my clients in the la last year were coming from affiliates, third-party marketplaces like Chambers of Commerce uh, and, the, and government agencies. And it's because I paid a subscription fee to these government entities. And when people were there looking for information, they'll click on my company and they'll send me the lead. So understanding that is really key. And you can use Google Analytics. It's very easy to do and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So you need to go in there and interpret the data so that you can market to that prospective customer in the way that resonates with them. Okay, so how do we organize a great website? Remember we talked about information hierarchy, really easy to do, homepage, about us, contact us, right? Black and white, very straightforward, easy process. People know exactly what to hit. And that's what you want to think about. What gets the customer to say yes to me? So how do we organize our, our websites? Short description names and labels. You always want to think about the customer when he lands on your website and what information they're looking for. And keep most of the important information on the main page. A couple of years ago, people had this one page website that was like, it's like long, long, long. It was so long. It was like, 10 pages in one. And that's because you wanted to keep the customer on that same page. Same thing with your website. You want to have the exact information that you need to get the customer to buy from you. We actually have a really cool tool that helps you uh, optimize your website and it gives you real life recommendations on how to go about doing this. It's called Google Optimize. And it allows you to run experiments for your website when it comes to design. And what do we mean by this? You guys will be surprised how much just changing a color changes your engagement rate. We had a company that changed their color from blue to red, and they increased clicks on that red button by about 35%. That's a lot of people who now are clicking on that because it's red. So this tool allows you to run what are called A-B tests on your website. It helps you, oh, maybe I'll try this color that color, this image, that image, this word, that word. 
And that way you can better see what's the best way to convert your prospective customers. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to let the data guide our decision making. We see the data, we say, okay, well, this is a better word than that word, this is a better image than that image. And now we're going to create, you can create multivariance, which is there. What does that even mean? We can control, have a control page, and then we have variations on the page with different things on each page that allow you to better understand all the different ways you can re-engage. So maybe you're running a promotion on the shirt, and maybe you say, okay, well, I want to run five promotions, Roberto. Jacket, pants, bag, earrings, and, and a necklace. And this particular tool will allow you to cycle through those five different offerings to 100 people or 500 people on your website. And you can see which one did the best in selling, right? That's really powerful stuff because it's a difference. Uh, uh, let's say 100, let's say two people buy on the jacket, but five people buy on the necklace. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to move the necklace to the main page because that's what people want to see. So that's really cool stuff that Google provides you at no charge that lets you better understand. I know it's a big lift sometimes because we're so busy, but if you work with a team, it makes it easy for you to test out what works and what doesn't work. The other things you can do is exactly what I mentioned, the A-B test, the redirect. Yeah, Marta, Marta brings up a great point. I'm with you. I, I think that sometimes we're providing a lot of information here. And we need to take a step back and see how to go about doing it. So we can definitely have a one-on-one. -on -one. Google has just launched a, a free consultation service that gives you 15 to 30 minutes with Googlers. And you can ask them questions. The unfortunate part of that is that they can't execute. They're only allowed to advise, um, which might still be great, might not be great, depending on what your needs are. But happy to talk about that uh, outside this call and see how we can help you. And so this is what I'm talking about, right? There's blue, there's red. I'm mean, sorry, <laughs> I'm colorblind. <laughs> there's blue, there's green, uh, and the green wins, right? Because more people are clicking on green and more people like this style than that style. And so now they're like, wow, we should have green buttons. And that increased my sales by 30%. Look, 10% increase. If you have 100 cells and just by increasing it and changing the color, that means 110 cells, which is fantastic. So those are tools that you can use for your website. Now, what can we do when it comes to the usability of a website? Text is good. It's about an engagement rate of like 10 to 13%. Image is better. Videos is best. When you compare apples to oranges and you start looking at these three different services, think about your experience on social media. Think about TikTok. Man, that is such a sticky song, right? Because it's a video compared to an image compared to copy. And so when you're going through your IG channels and looking at IG and everything, you start realizing, oh my goodness, you, you're, you're, you might stop at an image, but you will definitely stop on a video. Google did studies on this. And what they realized is that videos engagement rate relative to copy is an improvement of 3,000%, right? So that's that means that if three people stop, just by in, including video, now what would happen is 90 people would stop. It's a lot more people, a lot, lot more people. So we want to definitely include video. And now there's free tools like Canvas that allows you to download videos and then use them on your website. And it's very easy to do using a web developer. Case studies are always great. Uh, case studies are big because it's proof point. When you buy, when you go out and you're buying a new car or a new computer, most of us do the research, but most of us talk to our friends. Jessica, uh, what computer do you have? I really like how it looks. Where'd you buy it at? How much was it? And so we ask our friends. And what does that provide? It's called social proof. And social proof is really important to us as human beings. We definitely trust our community to guide us on what's best. And so when you have your website, you definitely want to create case studies. 
partake food to exact is what they did. They told you, try our samplers. Here's some testimonials. Here's why we're better than everyone else. Here's what you care about when it comes to the words that they're using. They created a very sticky brand and they help customers really resonate with the brand. Uh, and so when you think about your company, think about that. What can I promise my clients that they'll say yes to? Uh, I was talking to Rocio a little bit earlier and I was mentioning to her that we can now make some pretty, pretty strong promises to our clients and we have case studies that support it. And so now customers are like, yes, I love that. I definitely want to use that. That's the power. It's social validation. When people say, yes, trust this person, you're more likely to trust them. If they're like, mm, I don't know if you should trust that person. They don't look very trustworthy. I worked with them in the past and I didn't really like it. That's why it's so important to create these case studies because it proves the point for you. All right, we're gonna wrap it up with website functionality. Uh, you wanna be able to land on your website and search words and search phrases if you can. Online forms are so important. Uh, and in conversion rate, many, many, many years ago, there was a study, this is 2015. And so six, seven years ago now, it's a pretty old study, but they said that when you fill out a survey, an online survey and you submit it, if the company responds within 10 minutes, the probability of you buying that product or that service is increased by 40%. So out of 10 people coming in, if you respond within 10 minutes, four people out of 10 will buy your product. And after 10 minutes, that number drops to between three and 6%, which is crazy. It's, it's really, really cool if you have an immediate response. Now, online stores, we're not going to talk about that. Online tools are great. We love tools. We love playing with tools. How many of us are on Zillow, like maybe once a month, like, like oh, you're walking, you're walking your dog, you're with family, you look at a house, like, I wonder how much that house is. And you go on Zillow and you look at it, right? Or your friend's telling you about a certain tool when it comes to marketing, like Canva, and you go on Canva, like, oh, this is a really cool tool. So we love tools. We want, want to add a tool. So here are three scenarios of what you can do for your website. Let's say you run a shoe repair company and people either call or stop by to get a quote. That's scenario one. What can you do for your website? Number two, you're a counselor and you don't have anyone to schedule your calls. What do you do? Number three, you are, your cafe offers delivery. People call and ask the same question over and over again. How do you create a website that responds to these three scenarios? The first one, offer online form. Hey, you want quotes? Fine, you wanna see how much it costs? Fill out this form and we'll send you a quote within an hour. Wow, that's, that's great. Or instead of calling, right? Just fill out the quote. Um, I hate to bring up Domino's because I'm starving and I don't wanna eat pizza, but I, and I don't want anyone eating pizza if they're on a diet, but Domino's now, you can, you can order a pizza through text messages on Domino's. It's crazy. So they really mastered this. So think about how you can do the same thing for your business. Number two, what do you do? You can hire a third-party tool like Calendarly to set up and organize your schedule. And for number three, you can compose a Q&A section on your website answering questions that most customers are asking. What's really cool is that these there's bots now that are free that literally you fill in the questions that you want the bot to answer because you know most customers ask these five questions. So they land on your website, they have a question, they, fill it, they ask the question to the bot and the bot says, well, it's one of these five questions. Yes, they answer them. And if you, if you still need services, then they connect you to the actual business owner or customer representative. All right. So last but not least, we have to make sure that the customer enjoys the journey, enjoys the material. Oh, Elizabeth, you gotta put me up on that game. I, I will definitely eat some tacos over pizza any day of the week. <laughs> uh, so Elizabeth has a local taco spot that takes orders through text messages. I freaking love that. That is so cool. I definitely wanna know who that company is, who that taco place is, because I would love to see what they're using as a technology to do that and how we can give all taco places that functionality. But we want the customer to have a seamless experience when they land on your website. And if they don't have a seamless experience, 
a lot of customers just say, you know what? I'm not going to work with you anymore. I'm not going to bring my money to you, right? Because I didn't like how it was when I was playing on this phone and try to work with you. So we have to think about that for the customer. So we always think about user experience. How easy is it to buy? Simplicity over everything. Make it as easy and as simple as possible so that your five-year-old can play with it and, and order from you. There's nothing better than having a mommy call up and say, I didn't order that, my five-year-old ordered that. If you did that, you know your website is super easy to navigate. Always, always, always remind the customer, remember that bet and card example I talked about, bring them back, make sure they buy from you again, recommend similar products. Oh, you saw this bag, here are five other bags. We created a drip campaign for a client that did the exact same thing. If they had the bag there for more than a week, we send them an email and we show five variations of that bag and say, hey, we know you love this bag, but check out these other bags, you know? And some other bags were more expensive and some other bags were less expensive, but we did that intentionally. And the client was like, why are you putting expensive bags there? And the reason I told her is like, well, we want them to see how good of a deal they're getting with the current bag they have in their shopping cart. And they're like, really? And it's like, yeah, and it worked. Because they saw the, the, the other bag that was $600, and they're like, oh my God, that's a lot of money. If this is $400, this is a steal. And so they bought it. And so you think about that. Like, how do I convince my customer to buy from me? Check out, make it as easy as possible. Guest checkout versus signing up. Uh, always, always offer that offer. And digital wallets is big. Uh, Third party integrations is big. Really cool stuff. You could always go to Grow My Store. And Google has this functionality. If you have products and you want to upload those products for free on the Google search engine, you can do that. It doesn't cost you anything. It's called Google Merchant. And Google Merchant allows you to upload all your products on the Google search engine. So when someone sees that product, it pops up on the Google search engine on images, which is really great because it drives more quote unquote organic traffic. All right, we talked about this, make it as easy as possible to use um, and how whoop, uh, how most customers start on mobile devices first. Uh, and right now, what do they see when they Google you? They see an ad, they see organic listing. We want to have a business listing, which is super important for us. If you do not have a business listing, come talk to me because it takes you 10 minutes to do. And it drives me crazy when our customer or our community does not have something that's free that allows you to drive more customers. We did an exercise last month on business listings and we, we chose three clients. And what we did is we just focused on reviews and they, were, they went from ranking on the third page to ranking on the first page just by improving their business listing and improving their reviews. So there's ways for you to get to the first page of Google so that when people type in, your type of company, your type of product, your type of shop, you're on the first page of Google. So that I talked about this in the very beginning of our conversation, but just give you another quick overview. How does Google work? They're organizing the world's information. They have what's called a Google crawler or a Google bot. It's called a long tail spider. Some people call it, they're all different words for it, but in essence, it's an algorithm that searches the web. They match the word that you search for on the Google search engine with 20,000 websites a second. And it's that Google bot is reading your website, not with his eyes because it cannot see. It's reading the code of your website and it's reading your words and it's reading your alter tags and it's reading all these words on your website and saying which website has the best information for what the customer searched for. And then it connects you and it indexes your website according to industry and sector and which one provides the best information for your customer. And so that's why it's so important to organize your website. We talked about this 20,000 pages a second, super important. Only the most relevant website pages get brought up, which is why you have to have great images that are tagged. And what I mean, uh, alter tag, what I mean by that is when you download a, web, a page on a website, it should actually have what the product is. So if you're selling a type of jewelry, you want to name the jewelry of that image so that when Google reads your page, let's say someone talked about Bella earrings for whatever reason. I'm looking for uh, hoop earrings. 
And your website sells hoopy wings, but in your image, when you labeled it, you did not label it as hoopy wings. Guess what? That Google bot read your website, but did not read hoopy wings. And now you're not getting that customer. Another website that does have hoopy rings is getting that customer. This is the little things that make a big difference. So again, we talked about SEO, the importance of SEO, uh, fast loading time. There's another statistic after four seconds of waiting for your page to load, you lose 30% of your customers. We do not want you to lose 30% of your customers. Use for content, we talked about that. Text links are really big. If you can have as many, this is called backlinking as many other, your website, www yourcompanyname.com, what's called your URL, your website name, and as many different locations online and improves and increases your ranking. Uh, we talked about page titles, information hierarchy, and your browser, make sure that it's mobile friendly. And we all can run different things like Google Business Profile, media search to drive traffic to your website. Okay, with that, we have free tools, Google app, Definitely download it at your will. It teaches you a bunch of free tools and information. Uh, there's also free learning classes called Skillshop. If you want to learn more about everything I discussed today, Google Ads, YouTube, Google Business, Google uh, Academy Analytics offer free. Uh, you can definitely go online and upload all your material on your Google store. And this allows you to upload your inventory so that people can find you. Really cool tool here. Uh, and then there's other videos that we provide. With that, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. Here is our survey. If you can provide a few seconds and your feedback is always welcome. You can take a picture if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching. You could definitely take a picture of this particular slide and set up one-on-one -on -one coaching for your, for your needs. Okay, with that, here's the URL for feedback. Love to turn it around and ask you guys if you guys have any questions for us. Of course, Gabby. Uh, yes, I'll share it with Rocio and, and she'll share it out to the rest of the community. Yes, happy to do that. Uh, oops, I'll. I'll give you guys the, the actual link so you guys could have it ready to go if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, any questions? Robert, can you tell us a little bit about our next workshop, the one on April 7th on YouTube? It's the YouTube. Yes. So I don't know if you guys know this, but LA, IG Live, YouTube Live, great way to get in front of you, your customers. People love that one-on-one -on -one engagement. We're going to talk about how to set up your business page on Google Business, on YouTube. And man, so much opportunity here. Google gives you free space. If you guys are all in, in Southern California, to go to the Google Venice office. There's, a, there's an office by Venice Beach. It's actually closer to LAX. It's called Playa Vista. So if you guys are around the LAX area, they have YouTube studio there. And if you guys get 10,000 followers on your YouTube page, you get to use that space for free. And so what we're gonna discuss next time is how to improve your YouTube page, how to create a YouTube page for your business, how to create videos for your YouTube page, so that you're able to grow your online presence. So it's a great opportunity. And I would be remiss if you guys want to learn more about Google Drive. I know um, Rocio mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago that, hey, how do we work with uh, Google Drive? How do we develop Google Drive? So if you guys are interested in Google Drive and how to use the tool, we have a training tomorrow uh, at 12 for free. Uh, obviously you guys are always, always invited. Uh, but if you guys are interested, let me, Drop that link as well if you want to learn how to use Google Drive tomorrow. Uh, any any other questions you guys have? Nope. 
Right. Thank Rock you, Robert. Thank you. Diana, did you want to get on? Here we go. No, no te ves, no te vemos. Oh, hay que, hay que vernos. Robert, thank you so much for such an informational meeting and, and, and presented with so much charm. I can't wait for the next one. I'm actually going to put um, the link, the invitation on, on our chat. I don't know if you got that. And I'm going to hand it off to Rocio. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Go ahead, Rocio. All right. Before everybody leaves, we have a raffle, although I need to, let me see. Oh, I can't share my screen. Muy bien. So we are going to do a raffle like last time. And uh, hopefully everybody can see the screen. So we have four $25 gift cards, you could say, credits to the Goddess Mercado Boutique in El Sereno. And so we're going to spin the wheel for four lucky winners. Vamos a ver quién gana. Let's see. I'll take down the names and they must be present in order to uh, be awarded. Okay. In order to participate. Let's be present. Is Javier Mejia here? Yes, he is. Bravo. Felicidades. All right. Gracias. Congratulations, Javier. You must come to the boutique. And I am working this Saturday, 11 to 7. It's my shift. So I'll see you there. Gracias. Gracias. All right. Three more to go. Vamos a ver. Who's next? Cross your fingers, cross your toes. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think I saw. I think I saw Gabby here earlier. Gabby, are you here? I am here. Yay! Bravo, Gabby. Gabby, try to come down on Saturday. If not, you schedule with us when you can come and redeem your your prize. Thank you. Okay, two more. Here we go. Quién va a ser? Oh, so close. Moses, is Moses here? Moses, Moses, that's a key. I don't think I saw Moses. You want to check the participant list or keep going? I'll go ahead and check. Go ahead, one more. Dale, orale, vamos. Let's see who the winner is. I love these wheels. <laughs> They're so fun. They're so colorful. <laughs> Monica, is Monica here? Mo Monica Hurtado, I think, from uh, Adoración. All right, is she here? Or you want to, is that it? Four? Or you want to Yeah, keep that's going? four. Orale, pues. Okay. Congratulations. Felicidades. Make sure to claim your prize, everybody. <laughs> Muchas gracias. I don't know. You want to close us out, Diana? I just want to let everybody know that I will be sending a follow-up email that would include the registration to our next workshop. Uh, um, we're going to learn how to use YouTube to maximize our, our business. And that will take place April 7th. I'll send the registration link so that you could qualify for some more prizes. And thanks again to our, our partner, Rocio Flores from Bella Entrepreneurs and to our amazing presenter, Roberto Martinez. Thank you so much for, for sharing your content and we'll see you guys soon. Bye guys. See you at the Mercados. <laughs> <laughs>